Greetings and welcome to this Ash Wednesday worship experience. If you are viewing this on Ash Wednesday, February 17th, and it is not yet past 6 p.m., you're invited to come to the church to have imposition of ashes, either on your hand or on your forehead. On Ash Wednesday, we are offering drive-through ashes between noon and 2 p.m., and again between 4 p.m., and 6 p.m. We decided that the contact would be brief and limited and therefore safe if you would like to have ashes on Ash Wednesday. Wherever you are in your journey of life and faith, we affirm you and we welcome you to this worship experience. Thanks be to God. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for we shall praise him, our help, and our God. Confident in God's mercy, let us join together in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God of the people, you have called us to walk humbly before you, and to share in the struggle with the least of these. Yet we have failed to live up to this call. Today we come before you, asking your spirit to empower us to be agents of transformation for the world. Make us a chalice from which all the oppressed can find the living waters of God, who calls us to live a life of service, of humility, and of reconciliation with you, with creation, and with the world. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 12. 
is not the fast that I choose to adore the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide from yourself from your own kin. Then turn your light, break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicators shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, she pointing the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom shall be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up as the foundation of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. Word of the Lord. your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, 
Do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you that they have received their reward. But when you do fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Today's scourge of the pandemic, coupled with a brand new awareness of centuries of economic disparities, and awareness of centuries of racial injustice. These circumstances in which we live has created pain of such magnitude that it seems unique to our time and place. It is not. A superficial look into the history books would tell us so. Misery caused by the cruelties of nature, combined with the cruelties caused by humans, has afflicted people since time immemorial. Nevertheless, nevertheless, this moment somehow feels unique because it's our moment. It's ours. It's ours to suffer. It's ours to atone for. It's ours to repair. God understands pain. In the Christian reckoning, the torment and death on the cross, followed by a resurrection to new life, stands at the very center of history. From the cross, God declares, I love you. I know the heartaches and the sorrows and the pain that I feel, but I love you. And the story doesn't end with the cross. For Easter points us beyond the tragedy of the cross to the empty tomb. It tells us that there is hope for eternal life. There is hope for today. For Christ has conquered evil and death and judgment and all manner of separation. There is hope. And in this time, this season, is a time for us to reflect again and renew our hope. Let this Lenten season be not so much a season of guilt, let it be a season of gratitude, urging us on. And let us remember again and reflect on the question, the question that comes from Jesus' teaching, from Matthew. Where is my treasure? What ultimately sustains us? What ultimately sustains you? Is it things? Is it possessions? Is it money? Is it your annuities? Is it physical prowess, power? Is it any of these things? Ultimately, no. What ultimately sustains you and me, the very world, you know what it is. Love. 
love which comes from God. E.B. White of Stuart Little, Charlotte's Web, and The New Yorker magazine wrote once of his wife Catherine, who battled cancer for a long time, knowing there was little time left. Nevertheless, one fall in her last year, the season of fall, she went into a garden, and he wrote of it. He said, armed with a diagram and a clipboard, Catherine would get into a shabby old Brooks raincoat, much too long for her, put on a little round wool hat, pull on a pair of overshoes, and proceed to the director's chair, a folding canvas thing that had been placed for her at the edge of the plot. There she would sit, hour after hour, in the wind and the weather, while Henry Allen produced dozens of brown paper packages of new bulbs and a basket full of old ones, ready for the intricate interment. As cancer and age overtook her, there was something comical, he says, yet touching, in her bedraggled appearance on this awesome occasion, a small, hunched-over figure, her studied absorption in the impossible notion that there would yet be another spring, a spring oblivious to the ending of her own days, which she knew perfectly well was near at hand, sitting there with her detailed chart under those dark skies in the dying October, calmly plotting the resurrection. Now, my friends, is our time to be calmly plotting the resurrection. From these ashes that have become our lives together, let us together also calmly plot the resurrection. Join with me. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are our God. So teach us, Lord, to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. In this season, Hear our prayers for the earth. Hear our prayers for your children. Hear our prayers for your faithful people, seeking, seeking, serving, serving, loving, loving. Be with us, O Lord, and all who pray to you. Be with all who are in need and suffering. Help us in this season to know that you are with us everywhere, in all times and all places. Be with us, O Lord. We pray all these things in the name of the triune God, the giver and sustainer of life, as we give back to you the prayer you told us to remember. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
as this worship experience concludes, know that God is with you in this season of Lent. And know that you are an indispensable part of this communion of believers in Christ. The God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. May your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.